Hi, thanks for clicking on the video. Uh, this video is going to be about creating a kitchen cabinet using Fusion 360, going from design in Fusion, um, how to design it, how to make it so you can change it if you need to change it, uh, from, from design to cutting it out. So this will be a multi-part video. I hope it goes well. Um, I've done a lot of search and there's not that much on the internet about creating a kitchen cabinet. It just seems to be kind of like a black magic, I guess, for a lot of people. So hopefully this can help somebody. Uh, if not, it's hopefully will be fun to make. So the first thing I do, open up Fusion 360, get a new, whatever you call it, opened up. And I like to just save it right away as my, my thing. So this will be a, I'm gonna start with a 36 inch base cabinet. So I like to use parametric modeling in Fusion 360. I think it makes the whole process go much smoother. You don't have to remember anything. You don't have to uh, worry about if you got to go back and change something or you don't like something. It's super simple. So uh, there's going to be a lot of parameters in this video, but some maybe not necessary, but I would rather have more that I can change than not enough. So we'll start out with uh, the very basics. So what we're going to be making this cabinet out of. So it's going to be made out of plywood. Uh, and so the first one will go smallest, biggest flat plywood, quarter of an inch, or 125 thousandths, and 225 thousandths. Right. Uh, next one will be plywood. 500 thousandths, half an inch. And the last one will be plywood, 750 thousandths, which is three quarters of an inch. I'm gonna make this whole cabinet out of three quarter inch material, uh, UV pre-finished plywood, uh, since it is gonna be a frameless cabinet. But the way that I'm gonna design this, you can very easily add a frame. Um, that's all gonna be in the parameters. So it'd be real easy to add a frame and the front of my cabinet is going to be MDF uh, and we'll call that three quarter for now so the beautiful thing is you can go through and you can change all these parameters at a later date I like to make these all my favorites so when I'm done and I need to and I get the wood and it's on my CNC machine and I'm ready to cut I can go in here and I can measure out because quarter inch plywood is not quarter inch uh, half inch plywood is not half inch, and you guessed it, three quarter plywood is not three quarter. Um, and MDF is probably 18 millimeter or something silly like that. So now that we have our materials in, we're going to go through and decide what everything's going to be made out of. So material, what is the side made out of? Well, that's made out of three quarter plywood. And the, and I like to do it this way. You might say, well, why don't you just say the side, when you're modeling, say the side is, you know, plywood 750. The reason I don't like to do that is I might want to change what the side is made out of. And if I change pl the thickness of plywood 750 or whatever the parameter is named, it changes other things too that I might not want to change. So this allows you to use you know, three quarter plywood, half inch plywood, whatever you want, you can go in and you can just change what, what it is. Uh, okay, so we're just gonna go right through these real fast. The, the bottom is gonna be plywood 750. And we have, now with a lot of with a lot of parameters, it's easy to get lost in your parameters. So naming nomenclature is kind of important. So there's the plywood thicknesses, so plywood. There's the material thicknesses for what your what sides, you know, whatever, top, bottom, front. So it's easier if you name everything uh, in a way that you can understand. So top, and I'm just right off the bat, everything is just going to be plywood 750. So we've got the sides, the bottom, the top, the shelf. Uh, 
We've got the... And I guess I don't have to say material back. It just puts everything right next to everything. I can find the materials chunk of parameters and then find side, bottom, top, shelf, back. Uh, in my adult mind, it helps better. It works. And we'll correct all the spelling errors that we make as we go. So that's the back. Now we're going to have the... We're going to have the nailers on the back since it's quarter, just quarter inch back on these cabinets. We need something to nail through into the wall. And that's going to be plywood, 750. And toad stretcher. Now the stretcher you don't have to use. I like to use it, stiffens things up. Um, that's the toe kick piece, you'll see it here in a second. Okay, so that is pretty much everything we need for a frameless cabinet. To, there's still a lot more parameters we're gonna enter, but there's gonna there's a couple I'm gonna put in right now that will make sense later. Um, but it will give you the option to turn this into a frame if you wanted a face frame on this cabinet. Um, because of this, because of something we do right now, makes it easier to modify in the future. So that is going to be the frame thickness, and we'll call it 0.75 inches, so all like a one by or something, and the frame overhang. So on the, the face frame is going to be slightly wider than the cabinet. So I'm going to say the frame overhang is, um, if we do a quarter inch times two, because there's two sides to the frame, it hangs over. So the actual value then is a half inch. I hope that makes sense. A quarter inch times two times one to get a normal number is half, half inch. So there's the face frame, if you chose to use a face frame, is a total of a half inch larger than uh, the overall plywood of the cabinet. So I add these two and they're gonna come into play here in just a second, but I'm not making a face frame cabinet, so I'm just gonna put these as zero, but they are going to be used. Even if they're zero, they're going to be used in the future. All right. Uh, now the shelf holes, because I want an adjustable shelf, shelf hole diameter is 0.195, which is five millimeter. And most of those pins you get for your shelf are five millimeter. In Fusion, you can also just put in five millimeter uh, and it will change it for you. So I was two thousandths off, 197 is five millimeter, uh, but I'm gonna keep it 0.195 will give me a nice snug fit. Uh, okay, so now shelf hole front inset. So how far from the front of the cabinet I want the first row of shelves, two inches. Shelf hole look. back inset so how far I want from the back of the cabinet two inches shelf hole spacing so how much room there is between each hole you don't need a crazy fine spacing and have you know a lot of adjustment um, a couple inches is fine I like inch and a half find it a good balance uh, and then the last thing for these is the shelf hole depth uh, my sides are three quarter of an inch I don't have my pins in hand to measure the shelf pins so I'm just gonna say quarter inch the beautiful thing about this is when I get them in hand and I'm measuring all of this stuff before they get cut I can come in here and change it to exactly what it needs to be Okay, uh, and now we're almost done. See, we they build up fast, so it's nice to keep everything kind of, um, you know, organized if you can. 
Uh, and now for the actual cabinet. We have all the materials in. We have um, our sides and thicknesses in, all that stuff. So now for the actual cabinet. So we're going to do cabinet height is 34.5 inches for these. Cabinet uh, width. So this is where those face frame parameters are going to come in. I'm going to use them right now, even though they're zero. Uh, so the width is 36 inches minus, because the overall width of the cabinet, if it's frameless, is 36. And with a face frame, it's the overall width is 36, but there's a the face frame kind of overhangs the cabinet a little bit. So if we model up a cabinet 36 inches wide and then throw a face frame on it, you now have a 36 and a half inch cabinet and that's just an odd size it won't fit so this way the total our total width is 36 uh, and uh, and we subtract the frame overhang which right now the frame overhang is zero so it's 36 inches but if we change the frame overhang if we're going to use a frame then it'll adjust that uh, I hope that makes sense. And then this next one is the uh, depth. So same thing here, the cabinet depth is gonna be 24 inches minus uh, the, the front material. So for us, I'm using, I'm not gonna use a face frame. So I'm just gonna say minus the MDF front. And now we're also going to minus the frame thickness. So if there was a value in the frame thickness, say you're using a one by, that's three quarters of an inch. So you're 24 minus three quarters, you're at 23 and a quarter. And then you also subtracted the door from that as well, because the total depth is 24 inches. So this gets you the total depth is 24 inches no matter what you use. Face frame, no face frame. doesn't matter how thick your material is for your door. It comes out at 24 inches. So we will be okay. Uh, and now this, you don't really need this. You can decide on it. But uh, you try to think, would a customer come back and ask for something different? You don't want to redesign the whole thing because you didn't use a parameter. So the toe height, the toe, the toe kick, excuse me. So I'm going to use for the toe height four and a quarter. Now these really are just kind of like a design decision. You, there's no set that I know of like hard and fast rule. So the depth will be three and a half. So you could change these if you want, if you had, you know, seven foot guy buying your cabinets from you and he wanted his toe kick depth to be six inches you can just go in there and change it and it'll all update for you uh, if he's got big feet you know something like that something silly all right so that is for now all of the parameters that i can think of we have our materials we're going to build it out of we have the actual panels and the individual pieces of the cabinet here uh, the frame and the frame overhang if we choose to use it, the shelf spacing, uh, and the shelf hole depth. And then down here, the cabinet width, the cabinet height. Now, uh, I'll just go ahead and put these up top. Uh, oh yeah, one last thing. I'm going to have some drawer slides because these will have a drawer. So we will put in a drawer slide. And the drawer slides I'm using most likely are going to be half inch, but I can change that later. And the drawer material. Uh, this way I can come in and I can change the drawer material to something different. So right now it's going to be half inch plywood. So I like to do that. I like to use parameters to reference other parameters. So right now my drawer material, so I'm gonna make the, the drawer box all out of half inch, including the bottom. Um, I have it set to the plywood half inch here. Well, if I choose 
to make it out of something different. So maybe I have something on hand. I could just add a parameter and come in here. You know, I can add anything. I can I can change the value of it right here if I just have some scrap material that happens to be 0.56 inches. There, it updates the drawer. So um, I'm going to buy all the material at once. So it's going to be half inch plywood. Okay, so now we can actually start creating our cabinet. Um, I'm going to pause it here and we'll do, we'll start creating a cabinet in the second video. So I'll see you over there.